Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Welcome back. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So in the last two episodes about the wise man, we learned that the wise man, even though they were following the star, the star led them to the shack. And the shack experience did not discourage them, did not, they did not quit, but they began to seek and they found out three things. In the first episode, we learned that the wise men recognized God in the shack of life. Even though they did not find him in the palace, they still recognized him when they reached the stable in a manger where Jesus was, they recognized him as the God, the creator. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And in this we learned when we recognize God as our creator, there are three things that happens. First is correction, second is instruction, and then comes perfection. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when we, when our star leads us to a shack. Look out for God. He is always there. The second thing that we learned about the wise man is when the wise man worshipped the Lord, they gave gifts in the shack of life. Their heart was full of worship that they gave the precious gifts that they had brought all the way and they emptied it all. Hallelujah. So it's a time in the shack experience to give our all to the Lord and give our all through the Lord to others. Hallelujah. So the shack experience is to receive a blessing. We must have a mindset to be a blessing. So when our mindset is set to be a blessing to others, we always experience blessings in abundance. Hallelujah. And that's why uh, you can take that as an example of the parable of the talents. The one who multiplied the most received the most. Hallelujah. But the one who hid the talent, even that which was given to him, was taken to him. Hallelujah. And the third thing that we are going to study now is that the wise men, when they recognized Jesus as their God, their Lord, their Savior, as they began to give their gifts and emptied themselves completely in total submission, in total worship, praise God, they experienced the grace. Two kinds of grace that they experienced. First, they experienced the Lord's saving grace and secondly, they experienced the, the sustaining grace or the grace that they were able to use every moment of their life and that grace empowering them in their life. Hallelujah. So God not only saved them, but after experiencing Jesus in their shack, they heard the voice of God saying to them, don't go back from Egypt because Herod is going to kill the child. And therefore they found a different way to go back home. So they found new direction for their life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. Let's, let's read from verse 7. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I sought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And the Lord said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weaknesses. 
Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. So my friend, if you are led to a shack experience, begin to expect that you will find God's grace in the hour of need. What is grace? Grace is God's empowerment. God empowering you, giving you victory, working on your behalf with His ability, with His power, with His capacity, doing supernatural things for you, even though we don't deserve His grace. So Paul is speaking that in his life there was an infirmity that the enemy afflicted him continuously and he began to pray to the Lord thrice asking God that this thing departs from him. But the Lord responded and said, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. In other words, Paul, when you're weak and you rely on me, that you don't get puffed up because of the revelation that you have received, but you submit and humble yourself to me, then in the midst of that affliction, you will experience my love, my mercy, my anointing that will give you victory over your weaknesses. Praise God. Excellent. Excellent. And that's why he says, Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. In fact, I will from now on not boast of my strength and the great achievements that I have received, that I have experienced, but I would rather boast of my weakness because when I am weak and I am incapable of doing things, now I am depending on God's grace on God's empowerment. I am not doing things on my own. It is no longer my works, but it is believing in the Lord Jesus and His grace and His word and relying on His word by the power of the Holy Spirit. I am exalted. I am strengthened and I have the victory. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities. How many people can say that I take great pleasure in my troubles? I take great pleasure in my sufferings. I take great pleasure in persecution, in distress. And all this I take pleasure in for Christ's sake. Why? Because when I am depending on Him, when I am weak, He makes me strong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So my friend, life is not going to be easy. There are going to be different issues coming into our life. Praise God. But when these issues come into our life, even though things don't look to be fair, let us trust in the Lord, depend on Him. Because even when life lets us down, we can be a hundred percent sure God will never let us down. Now the next question would be, if God will never let us down, then how come my life is still miserable? How come I am not yet experiencing that power that I am supposed to experience? How come I am not yet experiencing that freedom that I am looking for? The reason is my response. Jesus could not do great signs and wonders and miracles in his own hometown in Nazareth. Why? Because of the people's unbelief. In other words, they accepted every lie of Satan and disregarded or, or failed to consider what Jesus was teaching. Grace is available to everyone. And what is grace? All that Jesus has achieved for us on the cross. 
is grace. Through Jesus came grace and truth. Through Moses came the law. Hallelujah. So these wise men received grace means what? They received the power by which they received salvation. They were saved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Even in that shack experience that you are going right now, the Lord is saying the same words. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Your loved ones might leave you. Everything around you that you see is temporary. Praise God. But the Lord will never, ever leave you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He is with you till the end of time. Praise the Lord. So in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5, the Lord says that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And that is the gift that the wise men received. When they worship the Lord, they believed in the Lord, they experienced the Lord in a shack with the promise that the Lord will never leave them nor forsake them. Praise God. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 15. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. So we have a high priest who is full of mercy, who understands our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So Jesus was tempted much beyond any human being can experience the temptation but he understands the struggle he understands the pain he understands the suffering that we go through when our flesh wants to oppose to the word of God so he was tempted in every area in all points like as we are yet without sin let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need because we understand that Jesus is merciful he has gone through the battle himself he is saying come to the throne of grace boldly why? because Jesus the high priest the Lamb of God has paid the price for us on the cross so even though you are going through a shack experience the greatest miracle of all the salvation is 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 a free gift from the Lord to all of us and this we receive by his grace by his forgiving love hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus so the wise men when they came in seeking Jesus they experienced the saving grace that comes from the Lord hallelujah let's go to Hebrews chapter 2 Verse 17. Verse 17 and 18. Hebrews chapter 2, 17 and 18. Therefore in all things he behoved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and a faithful high priest in things pertaining to God. Therefore in all things it behoved him to be made like unto his brethren. So Jesus was made in flesh and blood like us that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make 
reconciliation for the sins of the people. So when we have a shack experience, the most important thing that a man needs is forgiveness of sin. Because if he is not forgiven, he cannot make it to heaven. He is destined to go to hell. And Jesus, the high priest, has made a provision for us. He is the one who is the Lamb of God who has taken away our sins. Hallelujah. He is the one who has made reconciliation for the sins of the people. The enmity between God and man has been destroyed. His blood has, has washed, erased, wiped out, cancelled every sin out of our life. Praise God. For him that he himself has suffered, being tempted, is able to succor them that are tempted. So the one who has gone through the battle understands the battle. And that's why he is calling us. He is leading us. Praise God. Setting us free from all our negativity. Let's go to John chapter 16 and verse number 13. Now, that was the saving grace. Now let's see what is the next grace that God through his son is giving us as he gave the wise men. However, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and show it unto you. So the second thing that we see over here is we are comforted and when we encounter God in a shack, hallelujah, we can expect God to provide leadership and guidance for us. And what is that provision? The Holy Ghost. The Spirit of Truth, when He comes, He is the one who will guide us into all truth. He will teach us all truth. He will comfort us, strengthen us, lead us into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, shall he speak, and he will show you the things to come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So the shack experience is not meant to kill you. It's meant to change the direction of our life. And here is when the Lord will teach us leadership and guidance through the Holy Spirit. Our lifestyle will be changed. Our lives will be transformed. And we will be a complete new creation. Hallelujah. So the Lord has given us an assurance that in the shack's experience, as we have been adopted as children of God, He will never leave us alone. So we are never alone. We are never without God's plan and purpose. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He will always make a way for us where there seems to be no way. And the best part is, He will not only make us a way for us, but He will also support us through the shack of life to reach to our destination. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We can see even in the book of Acts, when Paul and Silas were put in the prison and the jailer had put them in the innermost prison, praise God, and when they were praising God and resisting their suffering, what were they suffering? Means what? They were resisting the lies of the devil. They were resisting every evil force. And all that they were doing was praising and thanking God. Hallelujah. And when they were praising and thanking God, trusting in God, in His provision for everything, praise God, the Lord opened up the prison doors. There was a massive earthquake, praise God. And in that earthquake, the doors flung open. Hallelujah. The chains were broken and the prisoners were set free. When the jailer saw that the prisoners had escaped, he wanted to kill himself. But Paul said to him, do not kill yourself, we are here. And the jailer brought Paul and Silas out and said, Sir, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved and 
your household. Now isn't Paul the same Saul who experienced his dream being shattered and God giving him the God calling dream and purpose in his life. And the same Paul who persecuted the church is now an apostle. And here is what he gives an answer. How can a person be saved? By believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now my question to you is, did the wise men believe the baby Jesus as the creator, the savior, the messiah? Yeah. Did they see any works of Christ? No. But did they believe in the scriptures? Yes. Did they worship him? Yes. Now were they saved? Yeah. Were their household saved? Yes. So remember salvation is no longer based on keeping the rules but it is based on believing in Christ Jesus. Believing in the finished works of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So many people want to please God with a set of rules but God is only pleased by a faith and that faith is when a person has made a choice to believe in Christ. Hallelujah. So remember your behavior, my behavior is not who we are. No matter what we do, our actions cannot reverse our salvation. The very thing that when we have received salvation, we have become a new creation. Now our hunger and passion for the word begins to increase the word of God becomes our spiritual food and that begins to strengthen us and that spiritual food called the word of God is what changes our action. Hallelujah. So Jesus gives us the free gift of salvation by faith. And we find Jesus in the gospel of John chapter 8 giving the free gift of salvation to the woman was very, was caught up in the very act of adultery. Even though her actions were wrong, but Jesus was offering to her the free gift of salvation. Hallelujah. The same Jesus is offering all of us the same gift of salvation. And how do we receive this gift of salvation? By believing. The wise men believed that Jesus is the creator, he is the messiah, he has come to save the lost. They believed and they received salvation. Hallelujah. Now, did the crowd condemn the woman for the act of adultery? Yes. Did Jesus condemn the woman? No. Jesus told her, go and sin no more. Did Jesus forgive her of that sin? Yes. Now, when Jesus said, go and sin no more, did his words carry the power for freedom? Yes, she were, the words of Jesus freed her from what she had done and allowed transformation to begin. In the same way, when we have been caught up in any kind of sinful life, when we repent and come to Jesus, he is more than willing not only to forgive us, but to set us free. The word of God does not bring condemnation, but freedom. Hallelujah. Condemnation stops transformation. When you condemn somebody, judge somebody, you are not able to walk in love. Hallelujah. But when you live a life in forgiveness, forgiveness opens the love of God and brings forth freedom from all evil and transformation in our life. Hallelujah. So please remember, good behavior does not get us into heaven. The only way we can get into heaven is believe in Jesus because he alone is able to take us to heaven. He alone is the Messiah. Hallelujah. Our works do not make us holy, but our identity in Christ Jesus does make us holy. So we become holy when we accept Jesus as our Lord, God and Savior. And that's what happened to the wise men. They received Jesus 
they not only receive Jesus now, their lives were changed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Their lives were transformed. So let us close our eyes and make a prayer. My friend, have you ever been following a star and you had all the faith, you had all the desire, you had all everything lined up, but you found yourself in a shack, wounded up, surrounded by all the dirt, the words, the criticism, the abuse, and all that has shattered your hope and shattered your dream. As you are listening to this message, might be you are saying, Hey brother, I am right there, right now, and I'm going and I'm going through the same battle in my life. My friend, if that is so, let me tell you that Jesus is still in your shack. He has promised you he will never leave you nor forsake you. He is working on your behalf and he is concerned about your need, he is concerned about every point in your life. He loves you more than you love yourself. And right now that same Jesus is working on your behalf. He is concerned about your need. He is concerned about everything in your life. So can we submit to God right now and do what the wise man did? Let us submit to God. Let us seek Him. Let us seek His truth. Let us seek His ways. So let us fall down in worship or kneel down in worship, not with our body, but submitting to our desires, to our thoughts, to our words that contradicts the word of God. And as we do that, praise God, He is able to take over our life and set things right in our life. Father, we thank you, we praise you for showing us these beautiful truths of how the wise men, even though it took such a long time to meet Jesus, their journey did not go wasted because they refused to quit. Do not get weary in doing good, for in due season you shall surely reap your harvest. It's not the time to quit in a shack, but to build ourselves more and more in the world so that we have victory over every shack of our life and lead others out of darkness into the marvelous light. Father, we thank you, we praise you for this glorious teaching in the name of Jesus. Amen.